groups, groups. So y'all need to be in here if you're not already. How do I? I wonder if that'll work. Will that work? No, it can't be that easy. Let's see. Okay, so just in case no one has the link, uh, I'm going to create it right here. And post it in the chat. Now you have no excuses. There you go. Seven minutes. Still open for questions if y'all got them. Oh, we got to get some people in the room so they can talk. That always helps. Always helps. Oh, man, my machine is crawling. Time for a new computer. That's what it comes down to. You don't really have to twist my arm to get best, best drone group. for measuring and uh, shooting video on roofs right now. Who is? Said, what is the best drone to purchase for uh, shooting video on roofs right now? As far right as now, I would go with the um, and and Jeff is here. Yeah. Uh, I would go with the Air, the with the Air 2S, or the Mavic 2 Pro. I just, bark. I just seen like last night on Facebook. It looked like they were making a new one, um, but I can't remember what it was called. So Mavic that right 3. there is the uh, Mavic 2 Pro. Yes, and it's battery. And the, I mean, these things are amazing. I'll show you. I'll show you the dinosaur I started with. Where's that guy at? Where's he at? Oh. Andy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Whoever just said that. Oh no, this is Jeff Marcus. I'm trying to see if Andy can hear me or not. I can. Okay. Am I expected to be on the screen? Like, can you actually see my face or not? I can't see my face either, and I don't see the video button. I don't know if that's what you want or not. I mean, I can always do. That might have something to do with. Um, hold on a second. Sure. I bet that has something to do with the panelist function. Let me see if I make you a panelist. Uh huh. Chat, mute, and remove. Okay, well, hold on a second. Up here, more. Promote to panelist. Let's try that. Now, do you have that option? I don't know. I'm sitting in front of my computer, and every time I talk, I see a picture of my family and not my face. Right, right. Like I think I have a, a camera on, but I oh, start video. I see that in the bottom. I hope. It. Oh, okay. I just got the little microphone. I don't have the camera. Usually, there's there a I camera am. and a microphone that you can click on and off. Uh, yeah, but I think that the way I well, I didn't set it up. My brother set up the webinar. It's probably because it's your YouTube thing and whatnot. It has something. I think it has to do with panelists probably, versus attendees is what it comes down to. And you probably would have to get everybody's consent to show their picture and whatnot on Facebook or, or on, you know, so maybe it has something to do with that. Hey, now you're, now you're bringing up stuff that doesn't need to be brought up. 
Oh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with it. I consent, so it's okay. <laughs> I consent. Uh, so this used to be the cream of the crop, Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, this was my beautiful baby for a long time before I got my Mavic 2. Um, Mr. Marcus will probably remember when I bought this. Um, but anyway, still a great machine. If I could find someone to work on this, I would fly this. It's a, it's fun. It is a beauty to fly. It flies like a dream. But are you, are you familiar with a guy named Roger Mortimer who works out of Ohio Drone Repair? That's what he does is repair drones. I'm not, but I need to ship this sucker right now. Okay. Come on. What the? I don't miss trying to put this thing away. I'll tell you that. Airplanes, forget about it. All right, I'm going to grab a little show and tell device. We are charged up. All right. All right, I'm going to start kicking people out of the gallery or out of here to the gallery, to the peanut gallery. All right, hold on a second. All right, 159, man, I'm timing this perfectly. Okay, so remove permission to talk, okay. Don't take it personally, just removing your permission to talk. That's all, you have no voice. All right, hold on a second, one more. All right, so everyone should be seeing me and Mr. Marcus. Uh, can I get a thumbs up or a smiley face or something in the chat. Um, I'm just going to assume that's how it's working right now. How about that? Whew. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Raymond, Braden, and Mr. Hall. You see, you see Andy, but not Mr. Marcus. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't see Marcus. Interesting. I wonder. Well, yes. when I hit record, it's going to record you. I'll tell you that. All right. So maybe uh, maybe play with your view. Maybe you have it on speaker view uh, and not gallery view. Uh, you talking to me? But try that. No, not you. Not you, Jeff. Okay. And now he's stalled out. <laughs> <laughs> when he talked, I seen him. Okay, so you got it on on speaker view. Uh, so whatever view you want to put it on, I like gallery view because I'm going to control this. Let's start video. All right, I'm closing out Facebook. Marcus, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm hoping you can see me. I don't know if you can. I cannot. Nope. All right, so I'm messing with the camera thing. I, you should be able to do it. I had two cameras and now I'm going to one. If I just get rid of this thing, I'd be fine. I'm not sure. If my clothes. Who out there is rocking the FLIR C3? I found this sucker in a drawer today and I'm going to, I just charge it up. I'm going to see if it still works. I got a sneaky suspicion that it's in a drawer because it doesn't work anymore, but we'll figure that out. The C3 uh, Bluetooth connected with no app. Like what app am I going to send that Bluetooth information to? I don't know, but tell me I can spend extra money and get a fancy tech add on. I'm game. I'm going to do it. Okay, we're going to hit record and get going here. Hold on one second.
My machine does not. Recording stopped. Oh, I just started it. I'll try it one more time. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome, 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 all y'all, to the Restoration Estimating Crash Course. My name is Andy McCabe. I'm the claim doctor, and I also run a small company called Claims Delegates. And all we do all day is Xactimate Estimating. Uh, today, to start out the class, this is uh, day number two. We're going to talk about scoping, but first, we're going to talk about documentation. We're going to kind of uh, we're going to dovetail onto how we ended our day yesterday, talking about how we get all this information uh, into one place so we can do something with it. I've got with me Mr. Jeff Marcus with Certify, aka RoofShots.com. Um, they've got a fancy, fancy little app that you use one of these fancy little things for with. This is my Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, so, yeah, Jeff, introduce yourself and give us the what for here. Hey, thank you very much, Andy. Um, so, yes, my name is Jeff Marcus. Appreciate it. Um, been in the industry for quite a while. Started with a company called Pictometry, which many folks that are familiar with Pictometry know that it kind of like merged with Eagle View. And so I actually was part of the ground floor when Eagle View was just starting to take off. So my background ultimately is about aerial imagery and measurements. And now we can get that with a drone. We're using the Certify roof app that's available at certify.com. But I'll get into that in my background and my partner's background uh, as we get through this. Um, so just wanted to welcome the group, but thank you very much. Um, we do integrate with Xactimate um, and I can kind of talk you through our process. But as you had pointed out, Andy, uh, we work with equipment like the Mavic 2 Pro or a Mavic Enterprise. Um, some of the thermal cameras that are out there, the Advanced or the Duo, it should also work with that as well. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, we create these roof measurement reports. And if you're familiar with Eagle View, you know about a premium report, you might have heard of the Quick Squares. I just like to kind of take you through the process, if that's okay. Um, but I can also talk to you about how drone operators are actually using drones when they're in the contracting industry also let's go let's go there yeah go there I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull up a couple of examples i'm gonna pull up one sure. of your roof reports oh okay i appreciate that so how are what is the state of the art where where are people i gotta imagine most mm -hmm. folks are either full on into i'm i bought a drone early and i'm using it daily mm -hmm. to I don't think I want this flying thingamajig anywhere near my office. Hmm. Yeah, and and um, maybe there's a little in between, but I'm imagining most people, if they haven't made the leap, there's a reason, and it's probably based out of fear of the technology and, and what else. So talk to me. Yeah. Okay, so some of the issues that might come up with drones, we'll clear those out of the way. Um, I've only had one person who said it's a paperweight, and I'd use it as an anchor. Uh, on my boat if I could. I've literally only had one person ever say that. Um, <laughs> so most people are actually using it. They might use it you know, once a week in terms of the slow side of things, typically from a commercial perspective, if it's like once a week. Uh, we've got other people who use it three or four times a day. Uh, it just depends. Uh, if they're dealing with residential properties, that's typically what the volume is going to be like. What they think they're using it for, generally speaking, is before and after images and videos that they do on social media, like posting on Facebook or Instagram or, or things like that. Right. Um, maybe they, don't, they don't see a deeper use case. Yeah, they, they don't. And one of the things, Andy, I think when you said, um, hey, I, before this actual presentation, you mentioned some files of roof shots that they were there that you can go and download from. I'd like to go over one of those today. Um, it's called How Contractors Use Drones Today. And that can kind of give you the, the case uses for why they would use it more often rather than just using it one time when they just think about it. You know, it's like, okay. oh, the job's finished. I'm just gonna take a picture of it. Yeah. You know, most people are using it on a, on a somewhat regular basis. It's just, you gotta extract it out of them and people don't share their secrets that often, but I'm the guy that, that gets those secrets and shares them. Oh, you want me to share, uh, I'm gonna share that screen. I can do yeah, that. Yeah, if you could, I mean, let's do it. We can share walk through screen. each one. It's, it's broken down by three one. different job categories, one. honestly. Yeah, that's perfect. And I have those 
Um, well, you've got an older version. I'll, I'll send you a newer version. Okay, do um, that. But um, I've got it broken down by three different uh, job categories nowadays. Uh, so when you do get the next version, it'll be like this. It'll be uh, sales reps and marketing, ownership, and production. So okay. let's just start with people that are going off and selling the job, an estimator, a, a uh, program manager, or something to that effect. These are the things that they would typically use them for. It's going to be on these pages, but I'll just, I'll tell you what I've got. Um, social media videos, that's obvious. Uh, before and after pictures. And that, actually, that's kind of important before and after pictures because you can compare the wear and tear or stand, storm damage before pictures, compare that to the after pictures, showing the completed job to the homeowner or any new prospects if you're selling. Okay. Um, you can also show the real life colors of the manufacturer as well. So oftentimes these people will, it's like, well, here's, you know, here is Timberline and you want to be able to show Timberline Black or Timberline, you know, Forest or whatever it is. Um, you can actually show that with those types of pictures. So before and after is rather important. Um, adjuster collaboration, because you got a, a lot of dealings with adjusters. Um, many IAs actually pay for those roof reports out of pocket. And if you're able to get, for example, a roof measurement report in 15 minutes, uh, then you can actually help them close their file and be the hero. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, there's always that like little trade-off. You don't think that it happens, but there is. You know, it's like, yeah, I'll round it up on your waste factor. If you can give me this, there's always a, that trade-off. Well, the guy that's only making $300 off of a job, um, you know, he would welcome a roof measurement report to be shipped to him. Um, and that's one way you could just do adjuster collaboration. You can also send them the, the images, the documentation that you're seeing as well to help him with his reports too. I have had, uh, I have been on a job site where the mm -hmm. IA showed up we were looking at the roof. Neither one of us wanted to climb it because it was too steep. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up flying the drone and putting this. Uh, can you see my video? Yeah. I, can. I don't know if y'all y'all can see my video. This is a uh, 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 FPV goggle set, uh, and I had I was looking through the iPad, and we were talking about the roof, you know, in real time, you know, and that was a very real application of hey, let's both work off the same data set. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, let's operate on the same premise that, okay, that's broken. That's not, that's weather related. That's not. Um, yeah. It was very, it was, it was nice to have. Yeah. It's very interesting that you should say it. we're working off the same data set. That's really important. I know that people think that Eagle view is like the de facto standard. Um, that's only because the carriers actually provide that to their IAs. The IAs are kind of asking for it. But when they've got nothing, I'm sure whatever you provide is something that they're going to accept. Mm -hmm. So um, just be cognizant of that. Um, you know, when we talk about like images um, with the drone itself, you've got damaged documentation. So you got cracks, holes, accumulation of debris, missing granule, hail damage of sauce on soft metals, evaporation rings, uh, dead valleys, wind damage. They're all telltale signs of, of leaks to come. And you can actually find them and highlight the urgency to repair or replace them by being able to demonstrate that, whether it's through your FPV glasses and they're seeing it real time or just taking the pictures and being able to provide that uh, to the homeowner or to the adjuster, for example. Um, you've got concepts like uh, safety, you know, just not having to get up on the roof. Um, you know, people get complacent oftentimes. They think they're doing well and that's where most of the, the trips fall right off the ladders, things like that. Uh, but this idea that you're going to be safer, much safer on the ground than you were on some steep and high type of job, um, that's something that uh, people just keep forgetting about. I, I've had situations where, like, it was a fellow, he's in Atlanta, he told me um, it was, uh, yeah, I was able to convince my wife to get a drone because I told her it was cheaper than a medical deductible. Yes, and, it was. And, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I think that's pretty good, you know. Um, so, there's always reasons for it. Safety is a, a very big concern. Um, obviously, better communication, like what you said, working off the same data set. It's not he said, she said. You've got the actual, quote unquote, evidence right in your hand. Um, you're talking to the homeowner. They're right next to them. You're not shouting up from the roof down to the ground or anything like that. Um, so they're seeing all of that. Um, you're building trust and credibility also. And I think you can see that on this page as well. Um, but that's right up here but um, you're utilizing a new technology. You can demonstrate it. Um, it's a competitive advantage 
uh, while you're doing that, because the likelihood is that people aren't using a drone. I'm guessing maybe one out of every 10 roofing contractors that I've come across has got a drone. You think it would be a lot more, but when you just get into it, it's like, no, there's 10 reps here. I'm the only one. Well, that's, and who's that person? That's the most successful one. That's the way I like to look at it. Nice. Um, so you've got concepts like that. You've got concepts um, like, you know, when we talk about social media videos, uh, I've seen people where they're tagging their customers on it. Uh, they're dropping it in their Facebook groups. They're using it as a basis for a sponsored ad, all of that as well. Um, well, and, yes. and, and that's all fine and good, yes. but we're talking about estimating today. Okay. And what this does is, uh, not to interrupt you, but we've got limited time, so we're going to keep things moving. Mm -hmm. uh, this enables me to bring uh, my little toy, fly it. Actually, the app flies it itself. You do some input. It actually takes off. You mark, you hit one button when you mark the, the level of the gutter so it can get its, you know, the slope right. And then the drone does its thing. Goes, clicks, comes back. You land it 15 minutes later, maybe I've got a roof report. I can take that roof report, underlay that into my Xactimate and start rocking. Uh, through what, three hours after that, if I order, if I choose, I can get the Xactimate ESX file and then I don't have to bother with any underlay images. Um, so that's the beauty of this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I believe if you're just referring to the ESX file, we make a promise that you can get that back within an hour not three. Okay. Well, that's, that's something that's, <laughs> that is something, you know, it, it's, it's one of those, is that a, do you, I mean, am I going to be back cat situation? Am I even going to be back to my hotel by then? Right. Um, probably not, especially no. with the traffic, the way it is. You know, and you, and right you brought now. up the, you brought up the cat aspect of it too. Um, the app itself will actually work without cell coverage connectivity. You can pre-plan your missions, go out and still fly it, and then bring it back to you with, when you have the internet connected so that you can actually upload that information. And we can still deliver back in 15 minutes from that point uh, itself. But at least the app itself will still work, which is actually a lot of other apps don't. They need to work off of the they cell They have to have that connection. They and have we, to have connection. And we don't. We, this, right. the, the app itself doesn't. Um, if you'd like me to, Andy, up to you. I can kind of demonstrate or talk through that process, kind of like similar to what you did. Um, well, I don't know. Do we need, to, I don't need, we need, we need to talk, we don't need to talk about how the sausage is made today. Okay. Uh, I think it's important that uh, the students understand that this is a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I finally got the app up. Uh, so this is the, the app on the, uh, this is the tab. Galaxy Tab A7. That's right. Um, I can probably, I, I wish I was technologically, I, could, I wish I could share the screen directly, but we're just going to have to do, uh, do it this way. Uh, here is, here's an appraisal that I did. Uh, this, that's a picture that the, actually, no, this is a, it downloads a picture from Google Maps so you can center the camera but then the, it flies itself. And I don't know if there's a, let's load, let's hit load and see what comes up. Okay, It'll, this is gonna come up with my, uh, shoot, all right. You know, I didn't plan to do this. No, it's not, it's not showing what I need to show. That's a different, showing something different. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's easy and <laughs> It enables you to be nimble and fast, um, especially when it comes to um, writing estimates. So uh, Jeff, where can they go to see, mm -hmm. see some more info? We're gonna put some stuff in the chat here. Uh, sure, um, so concepts here are, if, if somebody's got the drone, um, like a Mavic 2 Pro or a Mavic 2 Zoom, they can go directly to certifly.com to download the app. So certify.com, oh. download the app. For more information, uh, similar to like what we might post in your files, but it's updated and readily available on our website, it's certify.com forward slash contractors. And somebody can go ahead and download a variety of different files that are associated with that, including the FAA requirements on what it's like to be a pilot, uh, including like video, um, uh, video links, uh, something similar to like what you and I are doing today. 
Um, so that will probably be added. Um, ideas of like, what drones are useful, um, ideas of how contractors are used to using the drones themselves. So a variety uh, of information is available on certified.com forward slash contractors. And correct me if I'm wrong, but roofshots.com forward slash CD. You can get roof reports, non-drone roof reports. That's right. The way you can do that, again, type it in. If you're used to using like an Eagle View where you're typing in an address or something like that, and you want to get it back a few hours or a day later, you can go to our website, um, order a standard report or a deluxe report. You can also order an ESX file at that time. It'll come with it at that time and essentially be able to deliver back to you a fully baked schematic, hip bridge, valley E, flashing step flashing, even a, a uh, uh, what do you call it? A waste calculation as well. So Perfect. concepts like that are all included and an ESX file would be a separate file that you could also receive. So do we have any questions uh, from the gallery for Mr. John? Raise your hand and I think I can, I'll make you able to talk or something how this works. I sound so stupid when I'm trying to do this stuff. Uh, any questions for about, about drones, uh, pictometry, satellite-based roof stuff. Mr. Raymond, unmute yourself. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I know you guys mentioned it a couple. It's it's random. I mean, it was totally random. I'm going out to literally buy a drone tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Um, and I, I mean, your software seems super, super, super cool. So I would just like to reach out to you guys on Facebook and possibly get some more information. I I, I uh, asked to join that group. Um I ran contractors. Yeah, I randomly was just scrolling through Facebook and this popped up. So I was like, I'm going to go join. Right. If we can drones it drones for contractors. Yeah. Good yeah, group. Facebook. Group. Good group. Yeah. Uh, 3000 drone operating contractors at this point. Yeah. Or no, I think it was something different that I was just looking at. I think it was the other page, but uh, cool. What was Either it? Way, um, but yeah, if you'd like, um, take a note to yourself or reach out to me through Facebook, uh, Jeffrey Marcus. What is, uh, what is your page? I got, I was looking at claim for clinic present or is oh, that a, Andy's. Claims don't get you mean? Claim for clinic presents restoration. No, that's my that's my claim clinic page. Okay, okay. yeah, that I don't I've, know I've I got was... a. I was telling uh, so I had a had a meeting with my, my web developer today, and I told her I have a brand problem. Uh, I have a tendency to create a brand every time I sneeze. So yeah, you know, there's claim clinic, there's claims delegates, there's restoration rebels. Uh, you know, there's there's everything. So. <laughs> Yeah, you what found one the, of my uh, pages. <laughs> you said you guys you got a link to certify as well. Is that something that you can you got a page for? Yeah, if 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 you can see on the in the chat side, there's certify.com forward slash contractors. Okay. If you if you go specifically to that page, we will get you information associated with drones. So like you have to fill in your information, your your name, your email, and your phone number, and that's it. But then from there, you will get a variety of information uh, there. Uh, one of the things will probably be a link that also says, hey, join the Drones for Contractors Facebook group, which is also possible to do. Like I said, almost 3,000 drone operating contractors. So if you have any questions about drones specifically and not about Certify, they can answer those questions there. The, the, the Certify app does support the Air 2S, correct? It does not yet. We purchased it. And the only reason that we haven't said yes is because it's not available on the DJI SDK application so until that's available we can't test it it's android possible android yeah. okay yeah uh, well, that's the other thing not, yeah android so the versus fly is android too. only not yeah. ipad yet but give it time you know and we'll go get you're some. gonna have to give it time it's more of a dji decision rather than an us decision honestly got it got it um okay uh thanks raymond i'm gonna kick you out here um there and Jeff, thanks for being here. You're more welcome to hang out sure. uh, and and field any questions if you see them in the in the chat. Um, okay. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving. Great. Appreciate you. Thank you. I'll, un, I'll stop my video. How's that? And then I'm going to go remove. Wait, nope. Put on hold. Nope. Mm, nope. Make host. Rename. Nope. <sighs> Too many options. Too many options. Here we go. Here we go. Change role to attendee. There you go. There we go. Okay. 
Welcome. Hey, it looks like we've got a full room, a fuller, fuller room. I like it. Uh, some new names. Let's see, Todd Besnell. You weren't here yesterday that I remember. Maybe you could have snuck in. Aaron King, you weren't here, I don't think. Welcome. Um, I think everyone else was here. Uh, Raymond, unless you have another question, why don't you lower your hand and we will get started. Uh, just uh, we are live on the Claims Delegates YouTube channel currently. All these recordings will be made available uh, to, to you in perpetuity after the class, as will uh, all the documents and uh, resources that we've gone over. So uh, before we officially start again, does anyone have any questions um, about what we covered yesterday? I'll give you about 10 seconds. Can I add my platforms there? Are you talking to me or Marcus, Ivan? Um, I will, I'll find all those links. I'll find all those links for my stuff. Uh, and I put the certify links there, all of them. Okay. All right. We will get that. We will get that out. Uh, today, we're going to talk about scoping. Uh, yesterday, we talked about documentation. Uh, my favorite documentation tools, Matterport, certified drones, uh, you know, 360 cameras, uh, anything that saves me time as a project manager. Um, today, we're going to talk about scope. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about actually writing. Um, you, may, you may be disappointed that we're not writing an Xactimate yet. Well, the hardest and most overlooked skill in restoration is scoping the loss. Bar, by far, my clients, as, as an Xactimate estimator, my clients' number one problem is being able to clearly and, and with detail uh, describe the scope of the loss in a way that we can turn that around and turn it into an Xactimate estimate. Uh, are we going to, into more detail in Matterport or was yesterday at? No, we're going to use Matterport pretty, uh, we're going to use it a lot today. We're going to use Matterport a lot because while we can't all physically be in the same loss scoping it, we can definitely be virtually in the same loss and learn how to scope it together. Speaking of, I'm going to start sharing my screen and then I'm going to go find that link to the Matterport. I'm going to bring this sucker over here. And this is my Matterport.com. We're going to be talking about Sutherland today. Uh, so if you want to follow along at home, I'm going to give you the link right here. Maybe. And I'm going to put the link in the chat. Oops. Dunk, dunk. dunk. All right. That'll enable you to follow along. So why is, why is scoping so hard? Now, scoping is hard because we didn't all grow up in the trades and we don't all know what things, what, what steps are taken uh, in what order to get certain things done. When I started in restoration, I was a marketing guy. Uh, I grew up in the trades a little bit. My dad was an electrician for years. Uh, I was in the apprenticeship program uh, for a while. So I had, I had about this much exposure to contracting. Um, I knew electrical stuff pretty well. And that's why I, I mean, I write one hell of an electrical scope in Xactimate. I'll tell you what, uh, I can be any subcontractor out there. I guarantee it. But I didn't know how to do drywall. I didn't know about skim coating and texture and, and tape and tape mud. Um, I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know about you know, different paint sheens. I didn't know, you know, really, I can't, to this day, I can't build you a bread box. But as an estimator, as a project manager, 
I needed to be able to, to describe that pro those processes in enough detail to myself and to others. So I could write it, write an adequate sheet so we can make some money. That's why it's so hard. There's so many things and not everyone does everything the same way. Um, and Xactimate kind of forces us to think in the same way, but we can still get it done in a million different ways. So the keys to a good estimate are a good scope. The keys to a good scope is following a process, follow the same process uh, when you're taking the data and making your lists um, every time. That way you get in a rhythm and you don't forget things and then stick to the plan. Um, my estimating checklist is literally called stick to the plan. It's right here. It's in the resources we're going we're to touch on a little bit later. But before we can stick to the plan and write our estimate, we have to get our scope. So this is my scope notes sheet. You'll see there's no tick boxes there. There's no suggestions. It's just areas because uh, if we're writing an exact mate, exact mate is to the room, right? It's, it's, you, you can't just say replace the flooring throughout the house. Uh, you've got to replace the floor in the bathroom, replace the floor in the kitchen, replace it, blah, 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 blah. You know this. Uh, so that's where, that's why I designed the scope note sheet the way it is. Let me show you an example of how I used to do it before, before all this fanciness. This is post fanciness. This is pre fanciness. All right, so this is me pre system writing a scope. And this was a fire loss, I believe, Portland, Oregon, 2015. Way back. Can't see your screen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I was doing a hell of a job describing it, right? <laughs> so sorry. Here we go. Okay, this is the stick to the plan document I mentioned. This is the scope note sheet we will talk about shortly. This is how I used to do it. Um, so you can see my screen now, right? All right, John? Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I started out with, okay, what's the overall? What's my you know, grand scheme of things? Uh, and this actually happens to be a document I created to train a contractor how to do this. So it's kind of apropos. General conditions is where I put it here. You know, I'm going to need a temp toilet. I'm guessing six months. We can revise that number. A couple dumpsters. Open items for electrical. Open items for engineering. Open items for abatement. Uh, all this stuff you know, per sub invoice. We can get it. We can talk. I want to touch on that. Remind me if you don't. You know, per invoice is one of my pet peeves. Um, necessary evil sometimes, and then add the code later on, excuse me. And this is a beautiful sketch. This is the number one thing people trip up on. This is the number one thing that people give up on is writing a sketch. Uh, this sketch looks like I, I drew it, but I hadn't put my measurements in yet. And that's intentional. This is really hard. If you don't have good spatial awareness and, and uh, a modicum of, of drawing skills, and not everyone does, this is going to be a very, very hard thing to do. That's why I'm so in love with Matterport. You, know, I don't, you don't need to have any artistic skill set whatsoever, and the Matterport will give me the diagram that I need to write my estimate. Uh, but this is pre-Matterport. This is pre a lot of things. I think I actually I did have a laser tape, though. Uh, so I'm not going to go deep into how to sketch something, but I, I will tell you, start at the corners, take your whole house, start at the corners, mark your corners, and then work your way in from there. How far, how big is this office? What percentage of this wall is this office? And just kind of put a dot there. And then you go, you know, put your dot here. Okay, how much further down this exterior wall is this bathroom? And then whatever's left, does it look right? Does that good look like a good ratio to me on paper? Uh, oh, yes. Okay. And then you do the same thing. You put all your wall dots on the outside and then you fill in. You fill in. You, you fill in these rooms. Um, 
because I've when I didn't do this, I would start in one corner. Um, <laughs> I start in one corner, make my rooms, and then by the time I got to the other corner of the house, the rooms would be so small because I'm squeezed trying to squeeze them onto the paper because my scale is off. Um, so set your total scale right up front. Get, put your outside corners as your outside barriers and then fill in from there. Um, and I measured my windows. We were obviously doing some trim work. So I needed those window measurements. Uh, measuring your windows is important, but don't overdo it. I chose a couple windows and then you see these arrows where I said that windows is the same size. That window's the same size. That window's the same size. That's gonna enable me to build this window once in Xactimate and copy and paste it throughout the rest of the sketch. And then these odd, odd size ones, obviously of kitchen sink and stuff like that. Stairs are tough. Don't get hung up on stairs. There's always help. There's always someone that can figure that out. Yeah, you know, when someone gets gets all, all right, I'm gonna take a little bit of a, a little bit of a timeout to do a little bit of a rant. Every time I, you know, not every time, a lot of times when I say something about how, how I know Xactimate really well, someone always brings up, well, you, can you do a spiral staircase? And can you put a closet under that staircase? Um, no, but I can figure it out if I had to. But I don't remember the last house I was in that had a spiral staircase. And closets under the stairs aren't that prevalent anymore either. And you can always take that little stair room and put it off to the side. It doesn't matter that it's perfectly you know, aligned inside your sketch and gorgeous. It's nice, but it doesn't affect my bottom line on my estimate. So I'm not gonna get hung up on it. You know, I'm worried about the square footage of those stairs, not the shape of those stairs. Um, so going back to what I mentioned yesterday, be the butcher. Don't fall in love with the meat. Butcher's not in love with the meat. Butcher has a job to do. Get that meat in, cut the fat off, wrap it up, trim it, get it out the door. That's your estimate. You got to get that meat out the door because your company's revenue depends on that meat going out the door. So don't get hung up on whether your staircase is pretty, you know, whether or not your upper and lower levels match up perfectly in sketch. If the square footage is right, go with it. All right, rant over. Let's reshare. Okay, so there's that and that and that sketch. Now I went into scope notes. Uh, this is an older form, another brand, as I mentioned, contractor claim service. That one went nowhere, but it's still showing up. It was an idea, right? You know, give me a break. It was an idea. Um, so th this is as simple as it looks. Get your rough measurements of the room in there and square your room off. Uh, that can be used in, in case I lose my sketch or something like that. I can always fall back on and use these rough numbers to recreate a sketch. Um, so equipment sub trades. I know I'm going to do something in this garage related to electrical. But I'm not sure what. I can't tell now, but I'm going to put a placeholder in the estimate for later. Uh, I know I'm going to rewire it, so I'm going to rewire it. Notice I didn't put ELE, uh, RE, I didn't put in the Xactimate code there because it doesn't matter. I can always find the Xactimate code when I have Xactimate open. I don't have Xactimate open when I'm writing this scope and we're not going to today either. We're going to write the Sutherland scope for the kitchen and the bathroom. We might just do the kitchen, um, but we're not going to have Xactimate open when we're doing it. And there's a reason for that. I want your focus to be on the scope. I want your focus to be on the dwelling, on the structure. Let the structure speak to you. Let the structure tell its story. And you tell the structure story on paper, and then we put it in Xactimate. Uh, so you can, you guys can read that. I did break down and use some Xactimate codes here for the walls. CLNAV, CLNOP, clean opening. CLNB is base, uh, casing, you know, whatever. Once you get going, you're, you'll develop your own shorthand. Um, and if someone else is writing for you, they will learn your shorthand. Uh, but do it the same every time. Okay. Bio, bio sweep. You guys heard of that? 
still the greatest deodorization technology there is that no one has ever heard of. Uh, okay. Any questions on the scope notes or the sketch? Reminder, I don't do sketches anymore. I just do Matterport. Or I have somebody else do the Matterport, and then I have somebody else do the sketch. Uh, I did, where's my piece of paper? New Orleans office building, 25,000 square foot. Somebody else scanned it. Somebody else sketched it. It's sitting in my Xactimate ready for me to scope it off of the Matterport. Uh, that happened in two days. So don't get hung up. If you can't do this physically yourself, find somebody who can. Uh, find somebody who's good at all these parts. You know, find a person that's good at sketching. Find a person that's good at matterporting. Find a person that's good at scoping. It doesn't have to be the same person. Um, all right. No questions? We are moving on. Once again, we're going to break at an hour, take a quick break, and then come back. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the Sutherland scope as written by one of my estimate writers. This here, hopefully you can still see it. Every scope starts with, what is this project? Uh, it's, it's amazing how little information a lot of us use on a daily basis for our, for our clients. Uh, if you're not collecting, all of this information, once again, you have a copy of this in, your, in the class resources, you need to. Now, this is the basics. This is what you need to develop this claim. This is what you need to document and run this claim on behalf of your client. Get the claim number, get the carrier, find out who the adjuster is. Uh, you want extra credit, find out who the agent is and, and market to them. But this is where the job starts. This sets the tone for the job. And uh, this is the information, this is all the information I need before I can start writing my estimate. I need to input all this stuff. So there we go. Intake. These room notes are from the 24 hour tech. So this is a mitigation scope. Uh, we might try, let's try writing. Let's, let's write a mitigation scope. We're not writing today, it's tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll write a mitigation scope according to these notes. And then uh, we will write our own uh, uh, repair scope based on our own notes. But this is what this is what she came up with. And I'm not going to do the foyer, so I can read the foyer to you. Um, she figured there's an hour of labor of content manipulation. Okay, mask the doors. Okay, I can do that. There's a base cabinet in there, and you can see it when we, when we have the... Uh, does everyone have that Matterport open? Uh, if you don't, you need to get it open. And I have it, but it's not open. So I'm going to move it right here. Ta-da. Let me get in there. Come on. Right here. Here's a foyer. So she wrote this scope remotely looking at this Matterport. So this is, you know, this is very real world what my estimator came up with for a scope. So there's the cabinet she's talking about. Uh, ba oh, base cabinet. That's this. Okay. See, it's right there. I'm going to open that up. Can I still do? Yes, I can. And then, okay, replace engineered wood. What did we call that yesterday? We called it a, yeah, we called it engineered wood yesterday. Eight inch baseboards, paint base. Da -da -da. Okay, that's the floor scope. Can you think of anything else that would go on that floor scope? I'm not seeing floor leveling, right? I would add that if it were me. Uh, you know, that's, anyway, I'm not going to belabor that point. Then you move to the walls. What's my wall scope? You look around the room, look around the room more than once. Keep looking and keep looking and keep writing until you run out of things to write. Uh, and, and that's it. Okay, done with the walls. What's on the ceiling? You can go with the ceiling. Okay. And you can see uh, this is in your, your uh, class documents as well. And this is what we came up with. 
Uh, Master Bath, interesting. So she went deep on this one. Freestanding tub with faucet and drain, vanity, granite top, blah, 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 blah. I would, with the benefit of, of, of Matterport, I would have this scope open and Matterport at the same time. So I can go back and forth and figure out, oh, that's what she's talking about. Oh, that's what she's talking about. And the master bath is over here. That is a master bath. Monster master bath. Did I mention this island is full of gorgeous houses made by people with way too much money? Uh, okay. That covers scope notes. Let's start scoping. There's that, there's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this sucker out right here. And I'm going to make notes. Actually, I'm not going to print it out. I don't need to. I'm just going to make some notes here. We're going to make the same notes. And then we are going to um, write this scope. And, we're, and then we'll uh, uh, write the estimate tomorrow based on the scope we're about to come up with. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to bring everybody into the gallery and uh, then we're going to have, I'm going to have, uh, we're going to, it's going to be a little bit messy. It's going to be a little bit noisy, but uh, I want you guys, I'm going to ask you what you're seeing and I'm going to write it down as, as, as quickly as I can. And we're going to see how complete of a scope we can generate um, using, using Matterport. So if you haven't printed that out, just just make some. I mean, I'm just using. Um, I'm using a blank piece of paper. Subtrades, framing, floor, walls, ceiling. Let's get everybody in the room. Uh, so I want to do the Sutherland kitchen. And depending on how far we get, uh, we'll go into a different room. All right. Oh, shoot. How do I mute myself? There. Okay, let's look at this room. If you want to open up, um, if you want to open up Matterport on a different screen where you're at, I would invite you to do that. But we're going to get to the Sutherland kitchen. Let's go upstairs. This is a kitchen slash dining slash living room. TV room off to the side, beautiful golf course. I didn't get to golf once while I was there. All right, let's start our scope. First thing we do is put kitchen. And I wouldn't be afraid to do kitchen slash living because these floors are going to be continuous. Uh, so our first section is subtrades and framing. This is all the demo that was done. Let's check out this. Let's check out this. Uh, okay, so that slider, that one was not the same as that one. I, I'm guessing there's a big glass. No, it could have been. Could have been a set of these doors, maybe a set of four of these doors. Gone. So keep that in mind with our scope. Uh, we're not going to do an exterior scope today, so we're just going to stick to the interior to keep it simple. Uh, first off, on the top of our scope sheet, we have a length width height. Let's just do that right now. You can do that in Matterport by bringing down the measure tool, hitting plus, and I'm going to go... I'm going to go from this rafter here to the same rafter there. Okay, so we got 20 foot too. 
I might just go 20 foot. By, let's see if I can zoom out far enough. Yes, I can get that corner to corner. Corner to corner. 38.9, that doesn't feel right. But it looks like it's going to the corner. 38.9 it is. Oh, come back. Okay. My 38 foot nine. We will learn how to do this peaked ceiling tomorrow. But there's our ceiling measurement. Looks like I measured it a while ago. 15, really? Let me see if I can move this, make it straighter. And then move this all the way. It's not the beam, it's above the beam. Oh, maybe not. There we go. I'm going to call it 15.6 just for fun. Okay, subtrades. Uh, keep in mind, I'm on a desert island in the middle of the Atlantic. I have zero in house capabilities. Um, so I'm going to end up subbing all of this out. Uh, I need to come up with a number at least to get us ACV payment out of these guys so we can get the project started. I can always bring in subs or, or have subs give me quotes later. Uh, so under sub trades, um, I would put this big window under to be determined. Um, we can try to measure it. We can try to put it in. Um, well, what are you? What are your thoughts? What's the What's the group say? Should we try to estimate that window? I know you're going to say yes. So is uh, this is for reconstruction? Yes, we're doing a reconstruction scope today. Mitigation's been done, right? The cabinets have been torn out. You know, cleanup has been done. It's not wet here. Um. So as far as sub trades, if we don't want to do that window, I'm not seeing what else I would sub out besides maybe some of the specialty kitchen stuff. So I'm going to just put uh, kitchen specialty fixtures. Per bid. Okay. What else? under sub trades. We can always come back. Well, let's come back to it. Uh, framing. Mm, there might be some framing have to do with this wall. So let's, let's frame, uh, let's reframe exterior wall uh, at broken door. Let's measure that door. Let's measure hey, it. Andrew. Yeah. Yes, sir. How do you take a snapshot of pictures? Like for, uh, you know, say we're not taking a lot of uh, uh, pictures during an estimate uh, um, and, and we just want to do a Matterport and, and get the pictures from Matterport and just uh, download them into our Xactimate estimate just for a couple pictures, you know, showing, you know, how do you take snapshots of, of like when you're going through a room? Piece of cake. Uh, you have to be an edit. So you need to be a collaborator or an owner of the space. You get into the edit menu like this here and you go right here, photos, and you take a snapshot. Or what I like to do, I prefer, is come up here to settings, include measurements, and take another snapshot. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, you just snapshot. And then you go down to the, you close out that and you go to photo saved view. And there you go, you download any of those. Uh, 
But if you're going to go that far, I would take a snapshot wherever you are. Uh, you can get the snapshot there. I wonder if you works right here. It does. Uh, so I'd take your snapshot, click, close out of the picture app. So you, if you type the letter U, it brings up this little window. You guys seeing that? That is a link to this exact spot. And then so you can you can attach that link to the photo uh, in Xactimate. And that would be a very powerful way to do it. All right, we were gonna measure this window, right? Okay, for reframing. So let's grab our measuring tool. I'm gonna take the outside of the trim. 10 foot three, well, framing's by the linear foot. So we're just gonna go 10 foot three. I'm gonna round it up 10 foot six. And that's a two by six wall. Maybe that could be, <laughs> knowing the rest of this island, that's probably not a two by six wall. That's probably a reinforced concrete block wall. Let me see if I can see inside that wall. I can't, uh, that'll have to wait. Uh, it could be framed. Maybe the first floor is CMU. Anyway, you can't build houses with anything but that and expect it to survive hurricanes. All right, where are we at? We're done the uh, framing. Anything else in the framing category that you guys see? Okay, let's move to the floor. All right, we've already established this is a engineered floating floor. And then I'm going to mark down to floor prep because there's a prep item plus leveler. And we'll look that up. Uh, what else we got on the floor? We've got to detach and reset some, oh, some of uh, those little things, right? I'm going to put a note uh, in floor outlet times how many? Oh, what's going on here? There, that's better. Is there just the one? Does anyone else have this open? I think that's it. Okay, so we got our floor. Uh, do you think there's an underlayment here? Maybe. What was downstairs? Same. Yes? I think it's the same as upstairs. So you probably have underlayment. Trying to see where they pull any of this up. It's all going to have some sort of underlayment. Well, that's the one disadvantage. Um, you know, I can't touch this anymore. I, I could touch it while I was there. Uh, and I, so that information would have been great to have. Let's assume underlayment. And I'm just going to write the word underlayment. Hmm. 
No. Yeah, the whole time I was there, we were running on uh, uh, generators, uh, uh, little Hondas, little tiny ones. I filled out, I, I got 15 gallons uh, at the boat dock. It cost me $115. I'll never forget that. I, I thought he was kidding, uh, but the big Bahaman guy uh, behind the pump was not kidding. Mm, all right, are we done with the floor scope? You guys think of anything else? I got leveler. You got a floor prep. Okay. Uh, do you guys <clears throat> put the base content? Say what? Are you going to do uh, content? Remove content? Ah, still there you go. See, that's why we're, that's why we, that goes up in sub trades. Uh, at least that's where I put it. So, I'm going to put content manipulation. Good call. Good catch. Yes, we are. Uh, probably plan this whole house, probably plan on getting a Connex out front. And, you know, I wonder if they had a Connex out front. Not to get completely off track. No, they did not. They had a dumpster that was full. Okay. And do you use content manipulation or do you use pack out as a, you know, clearing up the house and pack everything out? It depends on how far, it depends on what the actual scope is going to be. Are we going to pack it out? Are we going to box it and, and store it? Or are we just going to shift it and get it out of our way? So if, if, you know, this would be a, this would be a full blown pack out, but there's still, I'm still going to put some content manipulation in every room uh, just for a little fudge factor. But yeah, I would, I would work up a separate contents uh, pack out clean pack back estimate for this one. I, I actually, I think that's their connex. I think that's, I think that's full of a bunch of stuff. They had a big problem there, though. Um, these these a lot of these connexes were not climate controlled. They ended up ruining so much stuff. So much. All right, let's go back up to the kitchen. So whether you put baseboards on the walls or the floors, baseboards are next. So let's do them. What is that? Is it a five and a half with, uh, with a cap, a little quarter round on top? Looks like a two piece. Don't forget the outlet on the baseboard. <laughs> no kidding. That's an eight inch, that's a nine inch baseboard right there. Uh, and we're going to, Given the nature of the loss, we're not going to mess around. We're going to tear them out. We're, yeah, we're not going to make any value judgments. In this class, we're not going to go into the, the, does it need to be torn out? Does it not need to be torn out? Um, yeah, that's, that's judgment calls for situation-specific stuff. Uh, we're not going to go into that, the nuance for this class. We're going to say it has to come out. So we got nine-inch base. Um, Baseboard, nine inch. Um, so here's how I do it. I do baseboard nine inch plus uh, cap plus PNT. That's how I say it. And I'm automatically going to do paint two coats on new base. Uh, that's just what I know. It's my shortcut. If you need to say paint base two coats, say paint base two coats uh, until you and your team get into a rhythm and you understand a little more shorthand, go as long hand as you have to, to get to tell the story accurately. Okay. How many base, uh, how many 
base outlets do we have? There's one behind me, there's one there, two, three. I'm gonna count that, four, five. Six. We're gonna we're gonna tie this little ante room into it. Six. Is anyone coming up with more than six? Whoa. Okay. And since it was a hurricane, it sat wet. We're gonna assume we're not gonna trust any electrical components not to be rusted out at this point. We're gonna replace them. So R and R outlets times six. And we painted the base, we got the baseboard in there, replacing the base. All right, uh, let's assume this is all the demo that's gonna happen besides that baseboard because we're replacing the floor. Uh, so these walls are staying in place minus the one we're reframing. What is the remainder of our wall scope? All right, I need some input from the gallery on this one. All right, don't be scared. Come on. What, do, what would you do? What would you do in this house? Yeah, paint the walls. Paint the walls, okay. You got casing on the door. Paint casing. And remove the registers. Do we have registers? Oh, well, those the registers. walls. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, paint casing. How do we want to account for the casing? There is an uh, oversized opening, a PNTOP uh, greater than. Uh, you want to count up openings and use that number? I think I would do that. Let's do this. So we're going to go uh, P N T O P, paint openings greater than large opening. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, times five. But then we can do a P N T O P regular, regular doors. One. Uh, and windows, two, three, four, and five. You guys caught up, catching up, times five. Uh, do you think we're going to be able to get that paint to stick on an uncleaned wall? The answer nope. is no. C L N A V. AV plus because we can. It's a per, it's a hurricane loss. Uh, also, C L N O P greater than times five. C L N O P regular times five. Right. Clean the opening, then paint the opening. If we were detaching and resetting that base, we do the same thing. We clean the base and then we paint the base. Oh, uh, where's my registers? Uh, H V C R E G, I believe. But if you don't know the code, just write down register, HVAC register. Well, one, two, three. That's a DNR, detach and reset, times three. What else? So we're still on the walls. <sighs> well, we're doing the kitchen, right? Um, now is the time to decide whether or not you're doing the cabinets now uh, or after. I usually do cabinets as a separate function uh, in the estimate. I, there's not a dedicated spot for cabinets on the scope sheet because 
not every room is a kitchen. Uh, but let's talk about the cabinets right after we're done with the walls. So what else? Um, what do we got there? We got these, right? We got to address those. Switches. Andy, do you already use the uh, uh, prep ready, uh, ready for paint line item, perhaps? Prep ready for paint drywall? Yes. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, but yes. I mean, well, that's what else is there when you're doing drywall? Uh, which is prep. Prep all the windows with plastic or paint, windows, doors. Oh, I see what you're asking. And yeah, we forgot our masking. Masking, exactly. Yeah, we forgot our masking. You know, this, the, I, I, the, the sheen on that casing is probably a different paint than the walls, right? which is different than baseboards, which means you've got to mask them off before you can paint them. So let's mask the hell out of this room. I like the perimeter floor. I like the linear feet perimeter floor. Um, so it's, uh, it's, I think it's, it's PNT M A S K L F I believe, but we can just write down mask and then my calculation is going to be perimeter floor times two plus perimeter of ceiling. And we're not going to, we're not going to mask uh, the floor because we're going to tear the floor up and then do everything else. And then the floor is going to go in last. Okay, so we masked and we cleaned. And we painted, right? Right. Okay. Let's talk cabinets. These things are shot. Those things are done, done. Uh, and there were, looks like, probably some sort of cabinet over this built-in hood and uppers all the way across. Looks like we had uppers right there. And this was probably a built-in something or other for this refrigerator. This is where I kind of break my own rule when I'm when I say write your scope first and then uh, scat uh, estimate because I like doing cabinets. Um, I like doing cabinets in Sketch. Uh, because I'm lazy. I don't want to write this information down twice, but let's pretend that we have to. So when cabinets, you've got uppers, you've got lowers, and you've got full heights. Uh, then you've got the countertop, and then you've got the plumbing and electrical, and you've got appliances. Uh, so let's start with just the boxes and measure our lowers. See, so his code is C-A-B-L-O-W. House like this, it would be C-A-B-L-O-W plus, plus, plus. Um, so I'm just going to put that on there, plus, plus, plus. How many linear feet do we got? Um, a lot of... A lot of this drywall that wasn't removed or the flooring, are they going to give you the, the total amount without it being removed as far as the mitigation that was done here? Say that again. Say that one more time. I don't see a lot of drywall taken off here. Would they give you, um, uh, uh, you know, the floors? Are, are you asking for the, you know, this specific one, would you ask for the floors to be refinished or removed and replaced? And 
I don't see a lot of drywall taken out here. They're going to give you a lot of problems with removing and replacing the the baseboard and all that stuff as it lies right here post mitigation. Yeah, this was a bit of a unique situation in that the demolition and mitigation was done by the homeowner. Uh, the homeowner went out and bought that machine and he was flying over from New York on the weekends doing this. Um, so as far as the scope that I wrote. Now, did he uh, give an invoice to the insurance company for the mitigation that he did? He probably won't. Um, actually, he won't. I, 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 now that I think about it, because he, uh, he didn't carry insurance on this house. Okay, so this is a non-insurance job yeah, here. Non-insurance, but I want to answer your question because I think it's a good one. Uh, I would, I would not develop this scope without some sort of understanding of where the adjuster and the carrier stood. Um, you know, in in in, I would want to know exactly what you asked. Who did the demo? You know, was it done properly? Do I need to do further investigation with my moisture meters to, to you know see? You know, if there's mold behind that, that kitchen wall, I would guarantee you there's going to be mold behind that kitchen wall. So let's assume for our purposes, this was a botched mitigation job by um, some man in a van with a fan. And you need to fix their oops um, with your scope. So let's, let's propose that. Let's replace all the drywall on that, on that kitchen side. Fair? Fair. Yeah, let's put it in there. So let's go back up to our wall section. We're going to do uh, R and R, DRY one half, and I'm just going to use a shortcut W for my calculation. W divided by four. And let, yes. let me ask another question for sure. as, as, as in regards to Matterport. Do you think the smart thing to do, like you know, as you know, we hire people, you know. I know that service master has, you know, your estimate writers, your, your mitigation specialists, in-house estimate writers, they, they segment all of these, these portions out to people, right? So um, as, as we grow in the sense of streamlining mm -hmm. things as much as possible, uh, is, is it the best way, best practice to, you know, say you go into a basement and there's feces on the ground right, right when you get called. You take three pictures each room. Don't even Matterport it yet and Matterport it after the mitigation is done. So then you have all of the blowers, dehumidifiers, the, the drywall taken out, the floor taken out. So you don't have to do, because we've been doing the Matterport right when we see the job before the mitigation is done. And I have to go get the information from the field guys and it's kind of redundant that way. Do you think it's better to do the mitigation, po uh, the, the Matterport post mitigation and pictures pre mitigation, right? On, on the, when you get on the scene, is there as a protocol? Far, as far as workflow goes, yes. um, I think that would be a, a more, it'd be a, a faster, uh, it'd be easier for you to implement that solution. And I think it's a perfectly acceptable solution. Snap your photos, do your documentation. I mean, the 24 hour tech was, was built not, you know, before Matterport. So, um, and it still works. You go in there, you document, you take your photos the traditional way. And then once it's clean and your equipment's in place, and then you Matterport it, because that serves two purposes of, you know, one is it documents your equipment. You know, the gesture says, well, you didn't have that DHU there. Well, bullshit. It's right there. Um, and it gives you your measurements and all the tools after that to write your estimates. Um, perfectly acceptable. Now, there are a lot of folks that do a pre-mitigation and a post-mitigation scan in a Matterport. Um, and I've got a client, a client I'm handling uh, appraisals for in North Carolina. He does a pre-mitigation, post-mitigation, and post-reconstruction. Uh, so there's three scans on every single one of his jobs. Um, and when, when you have a history of things going legal, that was a business decision he made to take the extra time and expense. I mean, this is not getting a Matterport done is not free, even if you're doing it in-house because there's opportunity costs for your time. Um, but he made a decision 
that that was well worth um, the effort. The juice was well worth the squeeze when it came to doing three different scans. Um, but I would be more frugal than that. Probably I would try to get just one scan. Um, and if it was a bigger job and I wanted to showcase it, um, I would do a second scan after repairs are done, but that would be for almost purely marketing purposes. All right, we're 17 minutes past the hour. We skipped our break. So I'm going to take that break now. Uh, if you wanted to follow along and you weren't so far, the link to the Matterport is up um, at the 2.25 p.m. mark uh, in the chat. And the Certify uh, links are up further than that. Fate link to the Facebook group is right at the beginning. Go ahead. Missed you. All right. I'm going to take a break. Be back in a few minutes. I'm going to hit pause on the recording. There we go. See you in a sec. I'm going to put the recordings. Uh, I'm going to put, put, post them as unlisted. Um, I haven't decided unlisted or private, but they're going to be YouTube. I'm going to raise this sucker up. There we go. So we got power back in most of New Orleans. That's a good sign. People are still running around like chickens with their heads cut off, though. Did anyone hear travel for cat? Hmm. 
No. It can be really good and can be really bad. All right, let's keep our let's keep going with our scope. We got everybody back. No, if we don't, let's get him caught up. Something something occurred to me. So I'm going to keep another note here. These um, let me share my screen again. Oh, let's hit record again. Mm. <coughs> Come on. Almost there. Boom. We're back. Uh, something hit me. Uh, I like to keep, uh, I do most of my stuff on something like that. This is just a notebook. Um, so when I'm in, when I'm doing scoping, you know, I'm scoping, we're scoping the kitchen right now, but I have an idea. I want something for general conditions. I just go, whoosh, I'm going to start my general conditions, right? Or I just took my, took my kitchen scope, put it off the side, general conditions, because we want to talk about that. And um, there's no rule that you have to finish the kitchen before you do something else. But as long as you make it back to the kitchen uh, before you're done, uh, you're, you're fine. So let's talk about this place. We already, we already said we're probably going to need storage container, right? So I'm going to put a storage container. And I'm going to put 12 months because this house probably still isn't put back together after Hurricane Dorian. Things move slow there. Uh, what about a temp toilet? TMP, TLT, and let's do 12 months on that. Uh, let's see here. Let's put a let's put a supervisor supervisor hours and we're going to leave that open here, but I'll show you how to calculate that tomorrow. And let's do a project management hours separate. And we're going to just put a placeholder there. What else would we need to get this job done? We're going to need a generator. Plus fuel. For 12 months, because I can't guarantee power is going to stay on out there. What else? Any ideas? What's something you guys put in your repair estimates? general conditions. Don't be scared. What do you know, Mike? Um, final clean, temp power, temporary power usage, temp toilet, dumpster, if you get a connection, a drop off pickup. Yep, yep, yep. Tim Power hookup, final clean, and you said connex, toilet. What else? You said something else there I didn't catch. You need to drop off and pick up the connex. Yep. Any permit fees? Yeah, that's going to be a big open item. But yes, we need to account for it, put a spot for it. Uh, in engineering, um, engineering architectural. That is where my fees would have gone if he was an insurance claim. Uh, I wasn't there to rebuild this house. I was there to document this house and build his claim package um, 
in case he found coverage. Uh, and also I was doing, I was doing mold testing. That's my main gig there. I was uh, testing for mold using, have you guys seen the Instascope? Do we have time? All right, I'm gonna, not gonna go there right now, but after class, I need to show you the Instascope. Give myself a note. Instascope, I think it's instascope.io, maybe instascope.com. It is a mobile air contaminant lab. It's a mobile uh, triple laser particle counter and uh, laser microscope. It's, it's crazy. It's kooky crazy. All right, back up. So let's, uh, okay, I think we got our general conditions. Let's come back. We were going to do the cabinets next. Let's do that. Let me share my screen. All right, I had that base cabinet. So I've got cab lowers. I'm just going to do a CAB LOW plus plus plus. Uh, everything is going to have to be built there. So I got eight foot nine for that lower. I'm going to do a plus and get my measuring tool back up in here. I'm going to call the lowers all the way across to that refrigerator. Now I guess technically that stove wouldn't have a lower in it. Okay, so let's just do that little two footer. Seven foot 11. So I'm going to call that two foot six plus eight. That's going to be my lowers. Let's not forget the appliances. I'm not going to do them right now. Okay, so let's do upper CAB, UP. I'm going to do plus, plus, plus. We decided that we're, there were uppers across this whole wall, or this, this end one was a built-in. Man, I wish I would have taken a different perspective. I must have gotten a rush. I need one more scan, right? That'll do. There we go. Uh, we're going to call this a built-in. It's just a freaking refrigerator, but it had cabinets. All right, let's do uppers all the way across. And then across to the door here. So uppers. Two foot three, I'm gonna round up because I can. Catch me if you can. Two foot six plus 19 foot six. That gets in my uppers. I'm gonna make a note. Counters are what? That's not a flat laid. Is that a Corian? Oh, or is it a, no, no, that's rounded edge. That could be concrete. I wonder if it, that's stained concrete or if that is a marble slab. Those of you playing at home, what do you think? Is that a manufactured stone? Hmm. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it concrete. I don't know if Xactimate has a concrete countertop line item. If we can't find it, we'll make something else up. Uh, so we're going to assume uh, same top was over here because we can't figure out anything else. 
Uh, let's do the appliances. Give me the appliances. Uh, we're going to detach and reset. So what are the appliances? Come on, just say them out loud. Refrigerator. Stove. Gas making stove. Stove, oh. gas. Oh. Oh. Microwave. Microwave. I'm sure there was one. <laughs> what about an ice maker? Is that what this is? Or is that a trash compactor? Ice maker. That's probably an ice maker. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. What is that? That looks like an industrial strength uh, toaster. It is. You can put a whole loaf in that thing. But that is not an appliance. That's contents. Okay, so dishwasher. Okay. Say that again. A dishwasher. Yeah, someone said that, but I think we got two actually. Dishwasher times two. There's a dishwasher. Okay, so that's the dishwasher that was sitting here. Oh, I'm gonna get out of this measuring. Yeah. There's a microwave then. Okay. And what about I, the hood? Let's go hood large. That is a commercial grade hood. And it looks like it took some hits. Stove did too. Let's replace them. Let's just make a note. Replace hood and gas range. Yeah, I'm curious now. Is that a warmer? I bet that's a warmer, warmer oven. And the beauty about this is a gesture says, well, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a warmer oven. That was uh, something else. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> At least I put something down, right? You, you, you can't get paid for what you don't put down. And if you're wrong, fix it. Okay, you're not going to hurt my feelings, but I'm going to use my best judgment and use the information I have at hand to do the thing. Uh, so we've got our appliances. We're replacing those two suckers. We've got our countertop delineated. We've got our uppers and lowers and refrigerator. Okay, we're going to replace all that drywall. We already have that listed, right? Yep. We already have paint. Okay. What about this backsplash? Backsplash is going to go on the wall section, but if you're out of room, just make an arrow. Backsplash. Let's round it. Let's use our lowers. So this is what I like to do. If I already have something measured, I have my lowers measured, right? So I have linear feet. So for backsplash, I'm going to just go cabinet lowers, meaning the cabinet lowers measurement uh, times, is that two foot? Close enough. Times two foot plus this whole sucker right here, even though it was probably in a cabinet, uh, it's got to go. So let's start here. Five foot seven by four foot nine. Five seven by four nine. And that is tile. Looks like tile to me. 
Okay. We're going to, okay, let's count outlets. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to assume seven, eight, nine, one behind there. Let's go nine. So we have outlets already listed. So I'm going to come back up in here and say plus nine. Okay, walls. Looks like they had under the cabinet lights. Oh, good catch, good catch. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I'm going to mark it down on my scope sheet somewhere. Under cabinet lights. And that's going to be the lowers again for a measurement. I wonder if there was an outlet on the back side of this. Nope, there wasn't. Okay, so here's a little trick, and we can address this when we write this. Uh, but these boxes, these lowers, do not include these ends. Uh, does not include this back, right? Because traditionally cabinets are up against the wall, so you don't have a back. Uh, we need to keep that in mind when we're estimating tomorrow. This island has a back and I might just, oh, there's an outlet cord right there. Plus one outlet. I might note my lower measurement, my eight foot nine. I'm going to put a note here in parentheses. That is the island. Okay. We got the hood vent we're replacing already. Uh, plumbing. This would go in a subsection up in subtrades, uh, traditionally. So, uh, but I'm running out of space. So I'm flipping this over. Let's just do plumbing. So this is what do you call a garden sink, a farmhouse sink? What do you call that? undermount sink with a weird that's a nice sink but it's rusted already is that rusted yep we're going to replace that sink oh appliances we've got a garbage disposal Uh, disposal, and I'm going to do dash R and R because I think it's going to need to be replaced. And I need to add one more outlet for that disposal plus a switch. Boom. Undermount farm sink. Perfect. Let's write that down. Undermount farm sink, replace. And so kitchen faucet, also replace. Do they have more than one sink? They did. Where was that? What what would you ask for the insurance company from the insurance company right there to re, to re, to re, to replace all of these things? Like, if, if, are you asking for the replacement of that floor or refinishing of that floor? Well, it's an it's a it's an engineered laminate thing, so you can't refinish it. Now. It, where oh, you can see at the base of that left right there where the it's kind of delaminating from the, the the cabinets are you know and you remove some cabinets right there too so you know yeah right there so you would take snapshots you know of those kind of things and, and would they give you removing and replacing of the 
of the countertop right there. These are all these are all up in the air things, right? Well, the 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 box has to go, right? That I mean, that's that's yeah. the best part of the box. The yeah. you know, it lo looks worse from this side. Um, so yeah, there I mean, we this go. this thing's okay. toast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, it's no question. Uh, you take a are we that or good? at this point? Um, are we going to go through Herculean efforts to try to suspend? You know, use artificial gravity and magic to suspend this cabinet, this countertop. Or try to get it if you're out dealing of this with house. With Allstate, you're going to have to. With Allstate, you're going to have to. Well, I would tell them to uh, go do it. You know, we will we will leave this island for your crew. Uh, you have at it. Uh, my experience with countertops, solid countertops of this nature, of this size, it's never going back because you're not getting it off. Um, yeah, so what you're talking about is is bullshit Allstate stuff, which I understand. But what happens when you say no? Uh, I mean, a lot of times when I come in contact with that kind of stuff, I just put, you know, detach, reset, and then I supplement it. Just say we couldn't do it. You know, you take the pictures, then... Yeah, and that's, you don't really that's a viable it. option. Yeah, yeah. We, will you know, we will make every younger, effort. I used to effort. fight that stuff, but now say, okay, then take the pictures that, you know, the floor is ruined and the floor goes underneath the cabinets and then it's got to be removed and replaced. Yeah. Yeah, and you can baby step it. Yeah, baby step it that way. If you know, excuse me, if, the, if you know there's a hot button issue uh, that a carrier is going to have issue with, uh, baby step it. Uh, yeah, a detach and reset is fine. Uh, in, in hell, I would... I would throw labor and material costs at suspending this thing to leave it on site. Um, but as soon as it breaks and it will break, you, you go back to gesture. Hey, we tried and it's gone. You know, here's a picture of the break, you have the break, you know. Um, but once again, this is, you know, it, it changes, you know, your approach to the job changes with the caliber of, customer and caliber of carrier. Yeah, if this was insured, this would be a Chubb or a Pure or a Lloyd's private, you know, private placement. You know, those guys would be like, whatever they need, do it. Um, so well, I did notice this. We, if we're doing this room, we left this whole thing out, didn't we? And I saw while I was there, mold. And if it's moldy there, it's definitely moldy back behind. So let's uh, let's add this to our scope. Let's call this our built-in. Built-in entertainment center. And I'm going to call that, we could be real lazy and call that a full height built-in cabinet. And I think that's the direction I'm gonna go. Oh, I already measured it. 10 foot five, so it's 10 foot six. And so we do a CAB FH full height plus, plus, plus at 10 foot six. And then do we have a counter? Uh, then we did DNR TV built in. What else? Oh, knobs, lest I forget. On, on, the, mitig Andrew, on the mitigation side on this, once you find out like, um, if, we don't, if you don't have a separate mold company doing the remediation, do you, uh, do you, what would you put to, you know, say they have mold coverage and they want you to give a separate, you know, say there's a lot of mold that you find and put air filtration devices and all of this jazz. Is that inside Xactimate a lot? Because I usually have a separate company doing our mold, but um, a lot of times you just keep it in house. You make more money if it's not that bad like that. 
are there are there line items that you just put separately for mold or is this just an air scrubbers and you know all of these normal things that we always put well i mean air scrubbers for sure uh i'm i'm always an advocate of writing uh, whatever you can in Xactimate, even if you're going to sub it out. Um, like, like we have a claim right now that has 5,000, but you know, they just have a $5,000 cap for mitigation and 10,000 for mold. And this lady's got mold everywhere. So the adjuster is a friend of ours and just says, right, right. That, you know, say, they say this job, say he's got a cap and say he had $10,000 for mold. He said, just separate it. It's not, mm. it's not, you know, uh, uh, mitigation, but remediation. You know, if you wanted to separate these things, you would just separate it with, you know, say you found that mold and it's prevalent within five rooms. What would, what, what line items would you put down to like remove that mold right there? Well, the cabinet's gone, right? Uh, and yeah. then you clean. Yeah. If it's wood, you, you sand, you sand and clean, you know, bare wood. Uh, and then you, you, you encapsulate it. Um, and then you build it back. Yeah. I mean, it's not, there's physical removal of, of the thing, you know, if it's a moldy cabinet, get it out. Uh, but if it's moldy stud wall, uh, clean it, sand it, clean it, encapsulate it. Uh, and do all that under containment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And your containment number is going to be bigger than anything else. But that's fine. Uh, I'm going to make a note in our general just, conditions. Uh, We're going to do... Jazz, right? What's the line item for containment? Uh, there's several. Um, WTR, I'd use WTRBARR. Okay. There's another line item there for negative air. There's, there's, there's a couple different items. You, you want to build a chamber. Uh, you're not just masking. You're building a, uh, a chamber. B-A-R-R. -R. I've never used B-A-R-R. -R. It's a great one. I'm a huge fan of, of making money wherever we can, and that's a good one. Okay, I'm going to add for uh, air scrubbing in their general conditions because we need to maintain a dust-free uh, dust and sanitary environment for our crews. So I'm going to put a negative air machine in there. We'll do that tomorrow. So we got this upper, we got this full cabinet height. We got this, there's my notes. Okay, so we got a TV. We need to add for two of these can lights. Um, uh maybe reuse them let's do a dnr can lights times two we got a couple outlets right we probably got one behind the tv we got one there one there i'm going to assume one there so three outlets and that's nothing special it's not really a countertop we're going to call that part of the full height cabinet knobs one two three four Five, six times two, 12 knobs. Let's go back to our kitchen and count knobs. Every little bit counts. Let's just see what kind of knobs they had. Uh, hardware, okay. There's all, those are nice. Uh, let's assume, you know, give me a number. How many do you think we had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pin, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Let's round it to 20. Nice knobs. Knobs times 20. Okay, ceiling scope. This should be easy. We're gonna clean and paint it, right? Ceiling, clean and paint. That's all the notes I'm taking. Uh, okay, so we got 
DNR can lights though. Woo. We're going to DNR the trim. Uh, there's a, there's a cam, uh, a recess can trim only function. So let's go recessed trim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18. And then hanging lights, three, uh, two hanging lights. We're going to DNR and chandelier DNR and then a fan DNR. Was there another fan? Speaker system. Speakers, DNR, one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is not drywall. This is a beadboard, right? That's more expensive to paint. So I'm gonna come back to my paint. Um, this paneling, TNG paneling, yeah, paint, TNG panel, plus beams. I'm not sure, I can't recall how Xactimate treats beams, so we're gonna leave that for tomorrow. Uh, that's gonna be a nice number to paint. Uh, okay, we decided we we're gonna include this room, so I left out a light. Where's my hanging lights? Two hanging lights. I'm gonna change that to three hanging lights. We're going to detach and reset that door. How many doors are we gonna detach and reset? Let's count, okay. Door, DNR, one. I guess we're not gonna go in that far tomorrow. There was no door here, okay. Let's do that one, but that one's big. Let's call it three, two doors. So DNR, three doors. We can address it tomorrow if we feel, if we're in a different mood. Uh, Okay, are we done with our scope? You know, keep in mind, we do have the advantage of having a Matterport. We can always go back and, and refresh our memory. Um, but for your purposes for this class, it's incredibly important to write out as full of a scope as you can before you sit down in front of Xactimate. Uh, that will just, and do it every time, do it the same every time. It'll just, you're going to make more money with your Xactimate estimates this way. Uh, because when you get to an Xactimate, I have, you know, I've told you guys, I have a shiny object syndrome problem. Like I squirrels. And so when I get into Xactimate, I have a tendency to go down these rabbit holes and I build on these blinders. The longer I'm in, program, the more I have a blinder on and I, I just forget things. I think about other things. I, and I, if I have this scope to go back to, and, and I'm diligent about, you know, I take, you know, I take a red, red pen, you know, I've got a red pen and I've got my scope and to, tomorrow we're going to have Xactimate open. We're going to take the scope. As soon as that's, that line item is put in Xactimate, I'm going to mark it off my scope list. And so I know I'm going to be done with my estimate, at least mostly done, when everything is X'd off on here. So I think I did it. Miraculously, I did it under 
it is it is three minutes to four o'clock. So uh, let's open it up uh, for questions on corbels. Where did you see corbels, Levi? I I didn't see them. Let me let me share again. You, you put that in the question and I, I was looking for them, but I don't see, you know, a corbel to me is something that sits right up in the corner of the, the casing trim, right? Or kind of an add-on up here. Now there is an add-on. Is that a crown or a, I'm just gonna make a note, add on something for cap on this full height. Built-in entertainment center. Add for crown slash cap. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see any corbels. Yeah, I was thinking more of like beneath the countertop. Oh, 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 I'm, oh, okay. So like supports, supports. Yeah, I don't think they had anything cantilevered out that far. And I think I got a pretty good angle on it from all sides. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Do you think there was a cabinet there? I think there might've been a cabinet there. I think that might've been like an extension wet bar sink something or other. Yeah, once again, I was thinking about mold while I was here. So I wasn't really, um, yeah, that's definitely not an end. I bet there was another sink there that no clue where it's at. Is it in here? Nope. <laughs> Man, I took so many cold wouldn't, you couldn't even call it a shower because the water didn't come down from above. I had to splash cold water up into my parts uh, <laughs> because there was no gas, there was no electricity, uh, but they had water pressure. Um, it was a this was a trip. This was a trip. Yeah. Okay. That. That, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the day. So um, you think of, it's going to be one of those cabinet, yeah. Oh yeah, you're probably right. So let's just add on in my scope, a big question mark extension there. And we'll address it tomorrow. Okay, so those of you who were waiting till four o'clock to, to read about or see about Instascope, um, let me show you, let me show you. You're very welcome, Keegan, very welcome. Uh, I'm going to, all right, I'm gonna stop recording now just to help my producers out with editing. So day number two, scoping in the books. And stop, there we go. Okay, let's get, let me show you I think it's Insta scope by detection tech. Let's just click on that. Oh, instascope.co. Let me share my screen. So that little sucker right there is the Instascope. Um, it's got an input there, it draws air in, um, analyzes it on the spot and gives you a live reading. This is pretty good 
Let me see here. See if you can hear this. I doubt you can, but. Traditional sampling methods for mold detection require several samples for lab evaluation. It can take days for these lab results to return, and even then, results are subjective and it's dependent upon a microscopist lab analysis. This scope is designed to move with samples, evaluating airborne particles in real time, and generating unbiased reports ready to review on site. Oh, well, that was anticlimactic. Uh, okay, so that is pretty much it. You saw a brief little clip there. Um, when it's running, you get these spikes. It'll beep at you. It tells you, hey, you just ran across a, you know, a, a, a cloud of mold. Boop, 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 boop. And you know, it's just, it allows you to do on the spot, very accurate analysis of where the problem is. Because think about the traditional mold testing. You've got, a, you've got a spore trap that sits in the middle of the room and you'll be lucky if it gets, you know, if it tests the air within, you know, four foot of either side of that thing, right? It does, it runs for three minutes or whatever it is and it, it captures the air and then it goes off to a lab. They analyze it. They do a... A, a comparison. It's not even a realistic, it's not, it's, it's anyway, it's not statistically accurate most of the time. So I was in a position where I was on a, an Island that's very hard to get to uh, out in the middle of the ocean. I had no idea how I was going to do mold testing until I saw this machine. And I said, you guys need to buy it. You need to get it there and I will run it for you. And that's what they did. It's a $45,000 machine, but it was amazing. It really did what it was supposed to do. Um, and it found mold where I would expect it to find mold. Uh, but it allowed us to be very laser specific with, you know, it wasn't this room has a mold problem. It's these cabinets, these lower cabinets have a mold problem because in the, throughout the room, you'd run the wand um, and, it, it, and it would be normal, but then you'd run the wand, you'd open the cabinet and stick the wand in there and you go beep, 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 beep. Okay, bingo. These cabinets got to go. You can't do that with a spore trap. You just can't. Um, and, and, and so it, anyway, um, I ran that machine through um, Gene Simmons' house I was able to analyze, uh, at the end of the day, Gene Simmons has a shitty HVAC system. Uh, and, uh, but we didn't, we did, couldn't figure out why his wife was being, it was, you know, she was having an allergic reaction and she was pretty sure it was mold, uh, but we couldn't find anything. We couldn't find anything. You, you guys have a minute. You want me to show you that job? Um, was that you? Were you answering my question, Beth? Because <laughs> I'll show you that job. I don't have a problem um, doing show and tell. All right, take care, Levi. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. So they we couldn't figure out where the mold was coming from. Uh, they had a water loss. Um, we knew where the water loss was and there was definitely mold in the area where the water loss had occurred, but there was no way for that air. To get, there was no way for that air to get from the moldy area to the living area. So uh, we were just, I mean, they were at a loss. They were um, pulling their hair out, trying to figure out, what was going on but at the end of the day let me see can i get out the front door nah, maybe okay i'm gonna go in the stairwell right here so out this door here ah, oh, you can almost see it there's a storage area uh it's under some stairs and it had long-term 
it's under these. Okay, it's right here. It's there's a little storage area underneath these stairs that go down, and it's molded at all. It's all hell. The drywall has fallen off, but there is no connection HVAC or otherwise from that storage area, which is essentially outside, to the rest of the house. So we had, well, what the hell is going on? So we're running the machine. We're running the machine, and we're getting nothing. We got a little something with the Instascope in this bathroom. And when we're running the machine, this little R2-D2 following us around, obvious water damage in here. So we did have, we had some penicillium, um, just some wood mold, but not like off the charts, nothing really blowing our skirts up. So, and we did the whole house and we come back and we did the living room and nothing. We're like, what is going on? So, so I said, I got an idea. Um, and so we ran our scan, we got our baseline in the living room. And then we brought the machine right over here. Oh, he didn't run the machine. We didn't do the Matterport. Whoa. We were kind of shy with our Matterport in here for some reason. So I picked up two of these pillows. We started the machine. We started the Intiscope, ran its cycle. And I took the two of these pillows and popped them together. Poof. And, and then stuck the, you know, stuck the wand you know, where, where I had hit the pillows and it went off the charts and we're talking measurable millions of spores. And that's where uh, the then president of detection tech CEO uh, Instascope said, that's the problem because these, these things right here, that and that, and those little holes, that's their HVAC system. And it's not moving enough air so this big room, the biggest room in the house, acts as a sink. All, contam all airborne contaminants in this house end up here. And they settle here and they settle into the soft goods. So mold remediation protocol, clean all your soft goods. Increase the flow rate of your HVAC system. Period, end of story. We could not have made that analysis uh, we could not have made that analysis with, with standard spore traps, period. You couldn't do it. So there's my, my love letter to Instascope. I want one. I'm, I'm hoping the company I was working for in the Bahamas is done with it. And I can get that one shipped back over here for, for cheap. Cause that would be my dream. I would love to do, you know, uh, David Luce in Florida is getting $750 a pot for these inspections. Oh, the beautiful thing, the cherry on top with the scope. I had that mold report in my hands before I left this driveway. The PDF was sent to me. It was amazing. It was amazing. So, all right, that's all I got. You guys got questions? Okay. Oh, thanks, Andy. You're welcome. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Maybe. Come on.